This feels like a repeat of last week because I have this Asiago garlic cheese dip right in front of me and yes, we froze it. We are going to do a taste test today to share with you how well it freezes, does it taste the same as it did last week? But before we get into all of that, welcome back to the channel. This is our Trader Joe's taste test on a Saturday as usual. If you're new here, we do taste tests every Saturday. Most of the time Trader Joe's, sometimes Aldi, sometimes Costco. Sometimes a random one thrown in there. But uh, if you're new, please subscribe. We'd love to have you join the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Now, I am really excited to try all the new stuff. We have a really yummy tart that we're looking at. It's a butternut squash tart. And, and it garlic. smells amazing. And lots of garlic. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and get right into this week's Trader Joe's taste test. All right. Oh, baby, just hold tight. We're up the moon. The first thing we are going to try today is the butternut squash and caramelized onion tart. Let me just tell you, this thing cooked up really nicely. I am quite impressed by it. It smells amazing. I just was kind of shocked by the price point. Yeah. Ten it's, bucks. It's kind of expensive, but honestly, when I'm looking at it, I, it looks like it's high quality. It does. It was refrigerated, not frozen. So it's fresh. I have high hopes for this one. Me too. And I will say, when I cooked this, the crust looks like it's crispy, but actually it's kind of soft yeah. and fluffy. So um, this is more of like, it, it doesn't have a crunch, like a thin crust pizza or anything like that. But we'll, ta we'll taste it and let you know. Wow. That's so good. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. The caramelized onion is my favorite thing in this. Yeah. Um, it it's is pronounced too. So good. The butternut mm. squash is great with it. I mean, this combination is wow. Out of the park. 10 bucks. Well spent in my opinion. And like, honestly, I feel like I would buy another one of these and make this a dinner. Um, this would be delicious dinner or even a lunch. It doesn't matter. But I think this is fantastic. The quality of the dough as well. It's just soft, fluffy. The toppings are thick and it's like, you're just getting a really fantastic bite. I haven't had the crust. What do you think about the crust? I would say the crust has a little bit of crunchiness. It's, uh, but for the most part, it's much more of like a softer crust. And the flavor of, I, I, I wanted to eat the whole piece because I wanted to see if the flavor of like that the caramelized onion mm. and the sweet potato, or not sweet potato, um, butternut squash, squash <laughs> went all the way through to the crust. And honestly, every bite was delicious. Yeah, and it does go yeah. through the crust. Like, you can see the crust lifting up a bit, and in between, there's still stuffing in there. Yeah. There's like, because I think stuff. they kind of fold it so over. Good. I think, like, the crust mm -hmm. goes wide and then they fold it over. So that way, you still do underneath the crust have that flavor in there. Um, really, wow. I, I'll be honest, this is really good. So $9.99 seems like a pretty fair price for that. And mm -hmm. it is heavy. It's pretty heavy. Like it you is. feel it and you're like, it's, that's going to fill up your tummy. I honestly think this is one of the top 10 things they've come out with this entire year. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Like, it's incredible. I feel like I could have a dinner party and serve this and people would be blown away. They would be like, where, where how'd you make this? And I'll be like, it's my little secret. You're not going to know about it. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely think that this is like just a, a fantastic yeah. product. So two thumbs up from me. Um, but now I'm thirsty because that was so savory and so yummy. But now I need something to drink. So I think we should get into the We're going to go beer. with the beer. Beer before wine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so which one do we go with? So we have, we have two beers today. We have one wine to try. Um, we have, you want to go with the Fest, yeah. Fest Beer. So this is the Brewery X <laughs> Fest Beer Ja or Ha. I'm not sure exactly what, how that's pronounced, but, um, 5.8% alcohol. Uh, it's going to be a Oktoberfest style beer, mm -hmm. which we've been having like every week we've been having one. So, yeah. uh, let's see how this one stacks up to the rest that we've had already. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure, I think there's a couple people that speak German in the comments. So if you guys know how to pronounce the, J -A. uh, is it J A? Yeah. Okay. J A. Uh, let us know. Cause that's interesting to learn. All right. Cheers. There we go. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Tastes like, tastes like a, a pretty standard, mm -hmm. um, Oktoberfest beer. Um, kind of tastes like a Stella to me. It kind of does yeah, actually. Like, You're absolutely know, right. Tastes a little bit like a Stella. 
Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't think that there's anything special about it. It just tastes to me almost like just a uh, lager. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd Nothing agree. crazy. So it's light. It's on the very light yeah. side. So it's good though. I feel like it's an easy sip in beer. It's like one of those tailgate beers you can take with you <laughs> to go to like the baseball game or whatever football game he likes to tailgate so yeah. I feel like those beers are perfect because they're light enough where you're not feeling like heavy and you can't drink any more than one well that's me obviously but <laughs> um they're like nice to, to pair with anything too like if you're eating something it's so light that it kind of complements whatever you're eating so I think definitely yeah I think it's a good beer yeah so you had mentioned that the butternut squash was one of your top 10 favorite products that they came out with this year yeah is this number one? Honestly, this is this is in there too. This one has yeah. definitely, for me, got to be number one of. I think the whole year, this is like. There's it's the so best. good. Okay, so are we getting into I, this? I, I, I'm trying to. I'm All trying right. to push us along. So today. <laughs> I have baguettes, and I'm so silly, silly me. Um, last week. I had these little mini baguettes oh. in the freezer from Trader Joe's that I bought a few weeks ago and I totally forgot about them. So I didn't forget about them this week. So I just heated these up in the oven per the instruction and these are so convenient to have. So if yeah. you haven't tried Trader Joe's like little mini baguettes in the freezer section, there's six in a box and they're so nice to have if you remember that you have them. Yes. Um, but I will, before we get into it, I know you want to dip. I know you do. But I wanted to tell you the process because I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about the freezing and how to get it to where we have it now. So what I did was I froze it, obviously, overnight. And today I took it out. It was solid as a rock, completely frozen. And then I just defrosted in the microwave for about two minutes at 60% popped it into the little oven that we have and I think we had it in there for about 20 minutes because I wanted to yeah, see what it was like in the oven and by the time it came out it was bubbling and it was nice and warm and hot so I think it's perfect temperature now and that is the process in case you were curious let's, all right let's, let's go do in. it all right oh yeah I forget how creamy it is it still looks the same yeah consistency same wise. consistency for the most part Hopefully it tastes, it doesn't it have that grainy nice taste. It looks nice and warm. Oh yeah, it's like steaming. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yes. So what do you think? Did it change in texture or anything? I don't think so at all. I think honestly it's just the same as it was mm -hmm. before, which is fantastic, which means that we can we save can it. Them. We can save it uh, for the holidays and, yep. and bust it out around Christmas time. I agree. So yeah, the test is done. I will say, bake it in the oven. We microwaved it last time. Still mm. fantastic. But the oven has like this, it's just like warmth throughout that you can't get in the microwave. I'm sure you guys know what I'm saying, but um, this is still as good. I mean, we're going we're gonna to eat this whole thing again. Yep. Um, with the bread too. Oh my gosh, these baguettes. If you guys have need to try this with some bread, that's all I'm saying. This, this week's better than last week. And it was a frozen one. So... I'm excited. This is like a very good, this is exactly how I wanted it to turn out. And it actually, you know, came out better than I expected because we oven baked it. But I will say you can freeze this. It's official. It's a product that can be frozen. And then I'm going to buy maybe like three or four for the holidays because yes. you just never know when you need to bust one out. <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, it, it sounds like a lot, but honestly, it's almost less than I would I think we need to get because mm. this is literally the best thing. It's mm -hmm. if you like garlic, you gotta like garlic. Because it does have a oh, very strong so strong garlic yeah. flavor. But it's like a garlic cheese dip and it is good. It's so. amazing. It's too good. <laughs> That's all I have to say. It's too good. <laughs> Alright honey, I wanna try the next beer. Can Me we too. move on to it? Okay, yeah. awesome. So this one here is the Vandals Punk Rock Fest beer. This is by Long Beach Beer Lab. I don't think we've ever had a beer from there before. I don't think so. I don't think so either. You know, we've had a lot though throughout the years and doing these taste tests, so. Yes, they're stacking up. Yeah. Um, so like I said, this is another fest beer. So mm -hmm. this is like another October fest beer. It's a lot and dark, I mean, not a lot darker, but a little bit more of the ambery color in this one. Yeah, slightly. Honestly, I think it looks pretty similar to the, to the brewery. It's a little darker though. It is a little is dark. It? Yeah. Maybe slightly. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Well, that's a lot different. It is a lot different. Look this tastes it. more like an Oktoberfest beer to me. Less of more... just like a lager, yeah. Yeah, this has like a warmth to it. Like, 
you sip it and you're like, okay, this has got like some this layers. It better. has like a lot of flavor. Um, definitely more of that like fall flavor that you expect or like Oktoberfest beer that if you've had it, you know what I'm saying. But um, yeah, this is a very pleasant, easy to drink beer. And I really like mm -hmm. this. This is like a cozy beer. This is something that you kind of want to have with some soup or a pretzel or something like that. Oh, okay. So the reason that this is called a punk rock beer mm -hmm. is because this is a, a collaboration with the legendary punk rock band, The Vandals. Oh, no wonder so, it's called The Vandals. That yes, makes sense. Wow. Exactly. Oh. They're, um, they're it's the 25th anniversary of their seminal album, HBVG. Okay. I See, it's is, important so. to read. Now, the thing yeah. is... I like to just kind of have my own opinion and things like that before reading. So a lot of you guys will be like, why aren't you reading this stuff? But I feel like it helps us in our taste test. And it's more so, honest. And then when you read it, you know, for all of us to hear, we're all kind of getting the scoop, inside scoop now as we're live. So. Yeah, and if we were to have read that, it would have probably said, oh, it has spice hints yeah. of this and that. And then we would come into this with already... Like, like a not preconceived an honest, yeah. thought process on what we're gonna say, so yeah. we're definitely those. We we don't watch other people try things or anything like that, and and especially not before we're gonna do a taste test because I don't want my opinion to be, you know, influenced. No. In, yeah, yeah, I don't want to have any influence. I want it to be my opinion. And like, funny enough, a lot of times, a lot of people say the same things even if they've done a taste test before us because we all have similar like opinions about these things. So. Anyway, we're moving on to the guaca salsa. I can't wait to try this. I heated up the black bean and cheese taquitos, like I said, and Tim and I are just gonna dunk it in and see how it goes because this is, um, it's a watery salsa, but now that I'm opening it actually, there is mm. some little, thickness to it too. A little so. bit, but it definitely is on the watery, watery side for guacamole. Yeah, definitely. Regular side for okay. salsa. Okay, so I did a big dunk. I did a Tim big, did a really a big big dunk. Mmm. <laughs> well, it definitely tastes like tomatillo to me. That is good. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a little bit of guac in there too. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really a great combination. It has that's that good. that cooling effect. So if you have anything that's extra spicy in your meal, this is the salsa you're gonna yeah. want to add because it will cool down your meal immediately. There's no spice to it at all. Agreed. Like there, it's just very. Um, it's kind of mild in the flavor department too, so I feel like it's good as an addition to something. I think even in like a seven layer dip, you could add this and it would be really good. But um, on its own, it's a little on the plain mild side, but that's okay because it's kind of like something you would add to your burrito or have like in chips and salsa and then this too. I do think it needs... Like if I were gonna add this to just as a dip, I would add some pico de gallo to it because I want something chunky. Mm. And I know you don't like tomatoes like I do, but I do think that there's something to be said about having like a bite to it and a little bit more flavor because yeah. it's a little lackluster in the flavor department, but it's still, um, I don't know, I really enjoy it. I think it's good. I, I, what I will say is I really agree. If you have something that's already spicy mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't finish this, like adding this to it will help. Because yeah. if, as long as it's refrigerated, it's quite literally cool to the touch and it has zero spice. And it kind of, I'm sure the avocado has like some level of base to it where it like cools things down. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I get the sense that if my mouth was spicy, that would help. My last thought on this is that it is, uh, it's a good thing to go out and buy and try. And yeah. Nice to have on the side for whatever you want to have with this guacamole tomatillo. So, it's yummy. I, I think it's addicting too. If you just did chips, that would work also. Yeah, I, I it does need a little, I don't think it's as salty and that's probably yeah, a good thing too. Salty chips. If you have salty chips, that'll be actually really good too. I yeah. agree. We are officially at the Wicked Good Candy Bars. And as promised, we're gonna try all four and let you know how we like each and every one of them. Like I said in the taste test, you know, it was hit or miss with the crew at the Trader Joe's that I shop at, which is my old store. And so I trust those people. I know them. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was just a mixed review with the crew. Now I do want to mention there's 24 per bag. So if you're getting them for trick-or-treaters, just keep that in mind. So there's six of each, I would assume. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see what size they are. 
Oh, they're, they're pretty big. Yeah, okay. we're going to share. Like, yeah, we'll let's do just share. Half. Yeah. So I'm going to get them all out. And okay, you know, so what is nice about these are they're all different colors. So you really can tell the difference between each one. I'm going to try to hold them up so that you guys can see them. It makes them a little, it makes it a little easier to like identify that you're getting all different <laughs> ones. Cause I was afraid they're all going to be looking the same. Yeah. So these are like dupes of like Kit Kat. Snickers, Snickers, Milky Way, mm -hmm. Three Musketeers, something like that. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna. I think we should try to not compare them. Just treat them how they are. Oh yeah. Because otherwise, I feel like we might. That might be why the crew is disappointed. Okay, that's fair. And also, I will say I do have a question of the week, and it has to do with candy bars. So stay tuned to the end if you want to answer that question and find out what the heck I'm talking about. And okay. also, speaking of Halloween. You people haven't been watching my Halloween video and it's a really good one this year. I put a lot of effort into this and my whole house is Halloweened out. So if you haven't seen that decorate with me Halloween video, it's the last one, no. It's the one right before yesterday's post. So check it out. It's a fun one. Okay, ready? All right, dig in. Oh wait, this one is caramel and wafer chocolate bar. I don't know about that one. So this has like the little crispy rice in it. Um. It has like a vanilla flavor, a strong vanilla flavor, and yeah, I, I, it's just not. I don't know. It's something about it. it. It, it's, it's airy, but it's almost like the air is like polluted. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that makes sense, it, it just has this weird flavor to it. Um, I, I I don't know, and, and this was supposed to be the Kit Kat. No, bar. I think that's like a hundred grand. That's Maybe. exactly what it tastes like to me. Is a hundred grand bar, except for. Don't they have peanuts in that? No. No. It's just Rice Krispies, caramel, and chocolate. And that's okay. exactly what this is. So I think this is a kind of a dupe for that. But there's a lot of air in there, like way more than a hundred grand bar, and a hundred grand bar has a lot more caramel. So if you don't like like that chewy caramel that gets stuck in your teeth, this might be a better option for you actually because it has a lot of those rice puffs. Yeah. So it makes it taste like you're, it's a light candy bar, if that makes sense. But the flavor is just very, there's just like one flavor to it and I yeah. feel like it just tastes like vanilla to me. Just like only vanilla and that's strange. But we're going to move on. Let's try yeah. the nougat chocolate bar. Is this going to be like a fast break? Uh, I don't think so. I don't have, think the people at Trader Joe's knew what they were comparing. I don't think they know <laughs> what they were talking about. Oh, this is a um, Three Milky Musketeer. Way? Three mm -hmm. Musketeer? Mm -hmm. Don't you hate Three Musketeers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't bad though. I like that one. I think it tastes good. And something I will say about actually the two we just tried, they're not like t completely overly sweet. Some of those candy bars, they're like too sweet and the milk chocolate just tastes like sugar instead of chocolate. So. I do appreciate that you're getting a little bit more of the chocolate flavor and it's not like, I mean, it's obviously it's a candy bar sweet, but it's not over the top where you're just like, wow, like I can't even have another bite. So I do like that. Okay. Time out. We got to take a little break. All right. We need a little wine break. So we are going to try the cheapo wine. The cheapo wine. <laughs> Rose and Finch. This is just a red table wine, 2021. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try it. I admit I'm a little scared, although I'm pouring this and I see the color, okay. You know, I'll take responsibility if this is no good because Katie didn't wanna buy it. And I thought, you know what, for $2.99, if it's good. You never know. You know, it could be, know. if it's good, it's only $2.99. If it's bad, it was only $2.99. Yeah. So. Um, well, I don't wanna, see. I don't wanna hate on it until we try it, but I will say I'm impressed by the color. A lot of times these uh, cheaper wines, the color is very almost see-through red. This one has like a little bit more of a deep red to it, but it there are no, good. no walls, no, no walls, no drippy drips. <laughs> no, wow. I've actually, I don't know if I've ever seen it like that. Okay, we'll but... we'll try it. Let's <laughs> let's not get a headache. That's all I hope for. Honestly, it's not could bad. be worse. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's, it's not great, but it's not like. Terrible. I mean, it definitely has a bite to it. It has a very, like a more of a berry flavor, but not in a deep way, more of like a sweet way. <laughs> it, it's it's not great, yeah. but for two ninety nine, I, I think it it's reasonable. It's not it's not bad, honestly. Like that's probably a good price for this wine. Yeah. I think it's better than a two ninety nine price indicates, um, but I think it's 
definitely, you definitely notice a big difference between an eight ninety nine and a two ninety nine bottle of wine. So yeah, um, I agree. It's, it's like it's a cooking yeah. wine. Yeah, cooking wine like mm -hmm. cook with it. Or, yeah. Or drink it while you cook. No, no, no. <laughs> or both. Cooking, cooking with it. Um, I mean, keep burping. Okay. I mean, realistically, are we gonna finish this bottle? Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like. Sometimes when we turn off the camera and I'm drinking the wines that we try, initially I'm like excited and I'm hyped. I'm like, wow, this is really good. And then, and this has only happened maybe a handful of times. It's not every time. Most of the time we try a good wine and I'm like, this is great. We'll finish the bottle. And um, that's like our wine for the day and it's awesome. But there's occasionally a wine where I'm like excited about and then I like keep drinking. And I'm like, mm, it's just kind of not sometimes sometimes the flavor like changes it does, you know, when, yeah. it, when the air gets into it and uh should get better sometimes it gets worse um so that could be the case but as of right now for what i taste I, we'll finish this bottle you know honestly i just took a third sip i'm gonna take one more say because it. just say that part again so just took a third sip okay i just took a third sip and honestly i think like you were just saying, the flavors do change and it's starting to grow on me. I, I can <laughs> taste more of the um, bold undertones there. Like I'm getting more flavor and it's not as sharp. So maybe it just needed to air out for a bit. Um, we do have an aerator on our wine, um, but sometimes just letting it sit out in the air does change the composition of the wine and it tastes a lot easier to drink. So I think it's opening up a bit. And I'm not gonna hate on it as hard as I did in the beginning because I feel like it's getting better as it's yeah. sitting. So, okay, peanuts and caramel chocolate bar. So this one's this supposed is to be Snickers, Snickers. Yeah. yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. All right, I'm gonna let you do the honors. Okay. And I will say too, like I feel like the chocolate is like enhances this wine. Oh, I know. I think it, the chocolate goes well with the wine. That's why I was like, let's let's have this with the wine. Mmm. Snickers? Uh-huh. Okay. It's a lot like Snickers. More of a natural peanut flavor though. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, totally. So that one is definitely my favorite of the three so far. But the last one we got here, the purple, what, what did you think? Did you have any other thoughts? Yeah, about I did. That? So I agree, the peanuts are very, like you can taste the peanuts throughout and I like that they're not so soft that it just kind of goes into the candy bar being as chewy. I like that there's a little bit of a difference in texture there, so. The peanuts are by no means like taking a peanut out of a shell and eating it and it being that crunchy because it does soften up inside of the mix of chocolate and the caramel. But I will say that I do like that it kind of holds together a little bit more and you have more stuff to chew on and try and like I'm just a texture person so I think it, it I liked it I thought it was great yeah me too so this last one we got here in the purple wrapper is nougat and caramel chocolate bar so. What's that? Milky Way. One? Milky Way? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm not going to like this one. Mm. <laughs> I like it. It is caramelly though. Mm -hmm. I feel like the caramel is like getting coated with the inside of my teeth. Yeah. It is very soft. Kind of pleasant actually. <laughs> I like it. I like that flavor of caramel in that one. It has a really nice flavor. It's like, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it feels really rich and smooth and creamy. And like, it's kind of, I don't know. It's good. I like it. I think um, of all of them, that actually the last one that I even let you have a bite of, I think I'm just chocolate it out right now. I'm not big sweets person, but um, that was maybe my favorite one. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was, was going to go the Snickers one, that one too, mm -hmm. but it's not, not very far off. That first one we had, dead last. Yeah. No way. yeah like I'm it. glad we had the first one because... It kind of like what we were gonna expect like it, worse, but it yeah. got better. So it tempered good. our expectations for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we tried everything, and I mean, not too many. Everything turned out great, and I'm really impressed yeah. by this cheese. Honestly, I'm just staring at it. it looks so I good. Mean, I just <laughs> want more bread. We <laughs> haven't finished it yet. Here's where we're at. In case you guys are curious, this is how much we've eaten, and I have one more of the little mini baguettes in our toaster oven right now, waiting. And Tim's like, right when he turns this off, he's going to get it. <laughs> He's going to go eat this cheese dip. Um, and I've seen someone on Instagram actually make like a little pizza with it. They use this as the sauce. Oh and like gosh, put like tomatoes dangerous. and stuff. Well, I mean the sauce, there's already cheese on there. So, you know, they yeah. spread it on like a, a non bread 
from Trader oh Joe's and then they like topped it with some stuff and yeah you can put like whatever you want on it honey <laughs> Um, but it looked really good. So I feel like people are getting inventive with some of these things from Trader Joe's. And now that you guys know you can freeze it, you can hold on to that thought and make it for the holidays. So, okay, we made it to the question round. So if you guys are still here, thank you. Um, but here's my question. So what is your favorite candy? As in your trick or treating, you get your bag of candy. What's the candy you're gravitating toward? What's the one that you always want to eat? Candy bar. Um, or Skittles, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a candy bar, but your favorite candy from Halloween and then your least favorite candy. I wanna know both. So oh. tell me your favorite and then your least favorite. So do you have yours? I'll, I'll kick it off. Okay. It's gonna go with Reese's. Two two Reese's are tied for one A and one B. It's Reese's <laughs> Fast Break and yeah. Reese's Take Five. Mm -hmm. Those two, they're right there yeah. as the, my favorite. <laughs> it's just great, delicious. And um, on the opposite side, it's like the Good and Plenty's. Yeah. Those are like the black black licorice types. Get them out of here. I don't want those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, those ones are definite wins. Those Reese's Fast Breaks, those have like been my favorite candy bar for years. Yes, I, I you are. You love those. I put those <laughs> in a stocking every year at Christmas. Um, and mine is, my favorite are Almond Joys, which he hates, so it's perfect. You know, That's it's sick. a match made in heaven. I like Fast Breaks though. Um, but I love Almond Joys, so I'm always getting those Almond Joys, and I do not like those, like, circus peanuts. Those things are gross. Oh, the puffy ones? Yes. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Why are those still out there? I don't know, but those are my <laughs> least favorite, so, or anything like black licorice, like you said. Any black licorice flavor? No, thank you. That's not for me, and I know some people love black licorice, so... I'm excited to see whose like favorite is the black licorice because that's always there's someone out there. I know. Yeah, you're your get mom. A comment. Your mom likes. There'll be comments down there. <laughs> so, anyways, um, that's it for this week's video. If you guys liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, click that little button, and subscribe so that you don't miss out. The holidays are coming, and we're already seeing like little holiday kits. I shared that in the haul. If you missed it, check it out. There's like a new body care holiday uh, dupe from Sephora that I might do a video on and check out the Halloween decor decorate with me video because it's awesome and yeah, I'm so proud of it. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.